sometimes it's fun to share with you some of the things that you don't hear on the air. Hey, welcome to the Wally Show Aftercast. Hi, guys. All the stuff we didn't get to in the course of the so show good to today. Hear from Betty's you. in a great mood. She is all of a sudden, yeah. And so, like, I was like, "Hey, you ready? To, uh, ready for this?" And she's like, "Ready to get this over?" Like, "All right, sassy." Uh, but she really does love the potties. I do. She's just trying to get out to our Bible mailing because we have a Bible mailing <laughs> coming yeah. up, and so she needs Nobody to get out there. Nobody cares more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what 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 do you not like about doing it? What do I not like? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I don't like um, when people are crammed into a really small space. A tight. lot of people are oh, crammed okay. into a really small space. Sure. And then because everyone's there, trying it seems to help. Like everyone's trying to help, and we don't need that many people. Okay, so you don't so have a problem a- with people getting free Bibles. <laughs> No. I've always thought that was what the issue was. Like, okay, why are we fighting? If we're going to tell off on me, then we're going to tell off on you what? because Chad was out there and he goes, Well, the good news is, that, so you know, Wally, there's only like 300 Bibles that we have to send off. And Wally's like, Oh, thank goodness. At least there's not a lot of people requesting God's word. Yeah, because I want to get okay, out of here early today. That was what he said. So tell me, why don't you want people to get God's no, word? No, I just said, Thank goodness we didn't have to like uh, do a whole bunch of them. Uh, mm-hmm. Because that's what came in. Now, if it had been 3,000, I would have been here for the long haul. Let's get it done. I love it. Love this happening every day. No, I, di- I didn't under- I didn't know mm. that you don't like that closed space. Are you like that normally with a lot of other things? Do you get like claustrophobic or you just don't like being around people in tight areas? Because I definitely have gotten more sensitive thing. to that. I don't, I don't know if I am or not. I've never really thought about it. But I think it's just frustrating when... There's so many voices and it echoes and it's loud. There's a lot of people and we're all doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, do we need this many people? Yeah. Does this make sense? That is like, if we don't need this many people, I'll just see you later. No, I'll just document it. I'll use my phone and I'll videotape Wally. From a distance. Yeah. I don't like, I've gotten to where I don't like being in large crowds of people anymore. I used to not have a problem with that. But I get, like, not anxiety, but I get anxious in that moment where I've got too many people around just me and there's too much to stimulus. I just want to be out. out of it. Yeah. yeah. And you I just don't feel that run. with these? No, no, I love this. I actually genuinely like doing the Bible mailings. As long as it's 300 and nothing above. Yeah, when it gets over about five, then it gets a little Then he doesn't genuinely love it. No, it seems like you're done. And then all of a sudden show, someone shows up with an extra box. You're like, oh, these people. <laughs> just why? You know, no. <laughs> all right. So here we go. Speaking of Bible... Uh, the Civil Liberties uh, Group uh, have filed a lawsuit uh, to block Louisiana's new law requiring that the Ten Commandments be displayed in every public school classroom. They recently happened uh, where they were like, hey, the uh, country has swung so far out of balance. We think this is a good thing. has to be displayed somewhere in the school. And it doesn't have to be this big thing, but it needs to be there. And uh, some people have said, well, this is not constitutional. So... Uh, it's funny because it's 100% okay, okay to have same-sex attraction and gender books for kids to read, teach LGBTQ agendas. That's fine. But if you're going to allow uh, the Word of God in the form of Ten Commandments to be in there, you like that's a problem. No, it should be part of the conversation. If you're going to do one, do the other. Mm-hmm. You know. But then I guess that's when you're like, well, what about the Quran and what about this? And that's did, what people yeah. are saying. I did see some TikTok post of a woman who was saying... Okay, if you're going to do this, then, and you want there to be the ability, do you want to teach teachers who want to teach kids other religious, let's say, like codes or similar things to the Ten Commandments, should be free to teach them those other things in association with the Ten Commandments? It's tricky because you look at, I think they were doing this in uh, like a city hall in Minnesota or something, and so a guy who runs like one of the Satanist church chapters there is like, well, we should have a, a shrine to our beliefs there too, and got it in there, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that's that slippery slope. It was interesting, there was a guy that said uh, this display sends a message to my children and other students that people of some religion, religious dominates and are superior to others, said the Reverend Jeff Sims of a Presbyterian church uh, who is a plaintiff in the lawsuit against the public school. That's interesting that a, a, a Presbyterian pastor is doing that. And when I at first wanted to throw arrows at him and be like, I wouldn't go to that church. Maybe he's that guy that's like, well, if we do this, then you're going to be having to put the Quran in there and Islam and other things that aren't good for my kids either. And so maybe that's his justification. I have no idea. Um, 
But there's this guy uh, who does some TikTok commentary called Date Right uh, stuff, and and I love this guy. It's very white ring com white right wing comedy. Ooh, that's a tongue twister. It is. Um, but he, he had this one the other day. He's like, "Why is it that drag queens only want to read to kids? You never see them reading to the elderly <laughs> because it's indoctrination. That that's, that's what this true. whole thing is, and that's what all of that's this a great stems point. from. Yeah, he's he's amazing. Uh, he had this one the other day, and it's a conversation between himself and liberals, like a fake conversation. I believe in God. <laughs> You believe in fairy tales? I believe I'm a woman. Yes, of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, the, the double standard on the liberal side is just staggering. And I get that they're arguing about the separation of church and state, but the funny thing is they're like, it's unconstitutional. Nowhere in the Constitution does it say the words separation of church and state. That was never a thing in there. What the First Amendment of the Constitution is, it's about Congress making no law respecting the establishment of a national religion. That's what mm. that is about. They can't say, okay, guess what? Like kings used to do this. We're a Christian country now, mm -hmm. or we're a Catholic country now, you know, and then they would use that religion to dominate and they would use that religion to segregate and sometimes do some really bad things to people. Um, and so that's what this is talking about, that you, the beauty of this is you actually have the freedom to express your own. The whole point of this is that you have the ability to express your religious freedom anywhere you want at any time you want. And then somewhere we got it mixed up along the way and it was like, no, this can't be taught to our children, you know? And, and, and if you want to look at our society you could definitely make the argument that because we have stripped God out of things, we are worse off today than we were, you know, 10 years, 20 years ago for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. anyway, uh, did you see that story? There was a guy that got hit by a roller coaster. Yes. I did. You did see trying this. trying to get his yep. keys. Okay. Because yep. yeah. some stories make me the headline, man, hit by roller coaster, make me instantly read it. I'm like, I have to know what happened. And so I was thinking about this and I and I, I read it. And so I hadn't heard what he lost, but apparently they said he was trying to get away into the the roller coaster restricted area and he climbed over a fence. Okay. And he, he got dropped in his there. keys and ah. he went in there to get his keys and he had told an employee what had happened and the employee was like, You have to wait until after hours. Yeah. And so I I guess he didn't accept that answer and Man. Then he, he crawled through and then got hit by the um, that the roller coaster and wow. the people that were sitting in the front of the Ooh. roller coaster ride they said it was like hitting a deer oh or the car. no they thought it was going fast too yeah like, yeah it was going a roller coaster. Well, yeah like if not known for slowness you know what i missed up my <laughs> statement i'm done i heard it was going fast yeah no. really you say that it was hit by a car <laughs> yeah i heard it was driving in a related story a man was hit by a turtle apparently going slow <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, is, it is sad i mean i had this situation when i went to uh disney world or land i don't remember the one in california land. no uh but i lost my mule day hat oh, I remember. while yeah. i was riding one of the roller coasters and um they had told, because I told one of the employees and they said, well, you're going to have to wait till after hours and then it'll be put in at the Lost and Found Center. And I knew we were going to be leaving the next day, so there was no way I was going to be right. able to get it back. So I had to go to Lost and Found, fill out paperwork, and I thought, I'm not getting that thing back. But eventually, yeah. I did. So you're, you're like describing it. It is a hat, and it's, it's trucker orange. hat. It's got a mule on it. Okay, his his, it. his badonka donk is right on there, <laughs> and uh, and my donkey badonka donk donkey is donk. right there. Uh, and they're probably there in California, going, "What backwoods so, hillbilly has this that's hat?" That's probably true. Or who wants this back? Yeah. But uh, it might have been this man was like. You know, he didn't know what that process was yeah. going to look like. He was impatient yep. and then made the wrong call. And life last altering. I, yeah, last I heard, he had really serious injuries that landed him in the ICU. Like, oh, brain. he died. He died? He died. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it he was, makes sense. That's a serious. Yeah. So, Ooh. I I understand this and guy. You know that, I think, I, no. Like, yes, I do understand. You know him. that the, the place can't be held reliable because they warn him. But they him. will. They'll sue him. There's He'll, no way. His because family there's will signs sue. on the fence that say, don't crawl Thou over. Thou shalt not. And apparently he got yeah. through because he, they said he was dressed like somebody kind of similar to oh. people, what they wear, uh, the uniform. The mm. Yeah, and so he was able to slip by. First, tell me why you understand this guy. Okay. So if I lose my hat, I'm not going to do it. 
If I lose my glass, well, my sunglasses, I'm not going to do that. If I lose my phone or my car keys, I yeah. probably am going to try to find a way to get them back myself thinking I can do it. But then you get what you get at that point, you know? And I'm sure that that's what this guy was thinking. He's like, I lost them right there. It'll take me two seconds. I can run out there and get them. I don't have to be here all day. And, you know, I can't believe they're not helping me. Like, I could see the thought process of that. Mm. It's not smart. No. Uh, but uh, it, it's like trying to beat, uh, you know, a train or something, which happened to me the other day. We were going to a t- <laughs> railroad track, and there was no gates for this track. It was like on a rural thing. And it was funny because my wife and I, as we started to go over the thing, I go, oh, my gosh, there's a train coming, like kidding around because she gets nervous about that stuff. And then we look down the track, and there's a train. I'm like, She's <laughs> like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, I can't believe that just happened. And I sped up, and we made it, obviously, um, because wow. <laughs> apparently trains are slower than roller coasters. Story. So I lived. Cool uh, <laughs> yeah. That um, was epic. <laughs> <laughs> look, Rock, look at me. So look at me. Mean. What? We do this to him. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay, not you're right. me. You're right. I apologize. <laughs> we just do I'm this sorry. to Gavin. Yeah, I don't have a win here. <laughs> yeah, no. So, uh, but anyway, yeah. So that that was just such a weird story. I can't, I can't believe it happened. Uh, Lady Rock, what do you got? On to more death. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So this one is about an actor who actually played in Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, yes. So, this guy, his name is Tameo Perry. I think that's how you say it. T-A-M-A-Y-O. Anyways, he's 49 years old. He was a life. He was a professional surfer. Yeah. Also worked as a lifeguard. Well, he passed away. They found his body. He had been taken, attacked by a shark. Nice. So he was nice. missing. He was missing limbs. What a way to go! Think about this. You you see this thing coming. Let's say he's surfing or whatever. That's a horrible feeling. You see this thing coming, and you realize you are missing body parts. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now you are bleeding out. Okay? Wow, you're very descriptive with this today mm-hmm. too. Yeah, but you Hamilton know, star. you know wrong what's with you coming. Two. Like that is. Oh, terrific! It's horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. It's like you, it, there's a lot. Well, it's like in essence, you can brace yourself for a lot of things. You don't. Like you don't, I don't think you know how to brace yourself for. Hey, arm right, here, arm oh, arm gone. Yeah. Well, and there's been so many shark attacks lately. I, th- th- that's been the, so the crazy. Many. Story. Is it just a summer? I mean, like, does this <laughs> the happen summer of the shark. over summer, and it, we just don't see as many stories? Or do it's we just, our shark attack era? Yeah, is what we're in. So what I know you know what they're going to say. It's global warming. Yeah, yes, no. yeah, I guess they, they are. Will. They're they're hotter. Write they're agitated. Down. Write it down. Yeah. It will be. You hear heard it here first. It made me think about uh, this podcast that I listened to. Um, there's one that I've been very vocal about because I've listened to it three times. And I'm just like, oh my gosh! But it's about this guy named Jeremy Evans, nope. and he gets attacked by a bear. And I pulled a little bit of it. Thanks. Why? But but it's it's not graphic. But I just want I want potties to get a taste of what I'm talking about. I jumped into a tree and uh, I was about six feet up. My right leg was dangling low and I was <laughs> trying to pull myself up. And I remember looking down at her and seeing her, her? at the base of the tree. The she stood right up, wrapped her paws around my right leg, and she's guiding it into her mouth. Ooh. And I remember looking down going, this is going to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a big Canadian dude. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, this man got mauled by this same oh. bear, grizzly bear, three times. Oh, I know. Because like, he, got he got in between the mom and the baby. Yeah. Accidentally. He didn't right. mean to. But those grizzly bears. Mm. That's where you, like, there has to be a point. This is so dark today. There has to be a point at which the good thing is is we don't have any birthdays. Oh, thank the Lord! <laughs> uh, is you're you're fighting for your oh, life, man. and so I'm happy. curious if there's a point where you're like, I just I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna survive. I'm gonna survive. But then you get to be like, I just want this over. Like, like uh, this is uh, this is not gonna be good. I don't know because I think, like for instance, that guy that we just played. Okay, so he gets attacked three different times, but he keeps by fighting. the same bear. Yeah, yeah, but he gets. He keeps fighting, right. and I mean, this man, he, he he's tore up from the floor. He up. is tore up from the floor <laughs> up, and that's putting it lightly. You'll, if you listen to the podcast, you'll know towards the end. Anyway, he lived to tell about it, but the thing is, is he considered just letting it all yeah. go, but the bear had left by then, yeah. so he never considered stopping right. until it was all said and done, right. but then he said he got 
he thought about his daughter and yeah. how he would never see her walk down the aisle or never meet her first boyfriend and all these things. And that gave him the will to keep going. I hated the movie, like the movie The Perfect Storm with uh, George Clooney. It's about these crab fishermen who their boat sinks. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I'd watch, you watch Deadliest Catch and I'd watch like those shows. So the the boat is sinking. And I think John C. Riley is uh, one of the other actors. And as they're sink, as the boat is sinking, the water's raising up over their chest, and it's like right about on his chin. Mm. And he just goes, and you know they're not coming out. And he just goes, "Oh, it's gonna be tough on my daughter." And then <gasps> boop, goes under. Whoa. You're like, "Oh, wow!" Oh. That's super yeah, tough. that's the same feeling I had when Tom Hanks said no to Wilson. Yeah. Wilson was floating away, and he's yeah. like, "Wilson, I'm sorry." Yeah, I ball. Have you ever thought like about no like intended. the phone call? Like if you were on, say, a plane. That was going to crash, or you think it's going to crash, and uh-huh. you hear always people calling their parents. Have you ever thought about that? No, you haven't. Have you? Seems like oh, a yeah. healthy thing to not <laughs> like think what about. they would say, or like what were... I would say. Oh, what you would say? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. And then who would you call? I would call my wife, okay. uh, and I would I would say things are going really bad. I'm probably not going to get out of this. I'm going to do everything I can to survive. But I am it, an amateur first right. responder. Right. If if I don't make it out of this, if I don't Tom Cruise this thing, right? Yeah. If I don't make this out of this, just know that you were the last thing I thought of. Oh. And so I've thought of that, or because I I was gonna say the last thing on my mind, but that sounds bad. <laughs> like you're the last thing I thought uh, oh, on my mind. Oh, I see. I see. I see <laughs> yeah. what you're saying. Have you ever seen the music video for um, Brian McKnight? And the song is called Back at One. Uh, I don't remember the video. I know the song. The video, the music video is all about him going down in a plane. Oh. And you see, but you don't know that. All you see at the beginning is him walking through a cornfield and these people are walking along with him. Oh. But you see first responders like running past them and you're like, what's going on? What's That's going crazy. on? And then at the end you find out he was involved in a plane crash, oh. but he had called his wife and they were on the phone and he was just saying. And he did. What if, what if. Great uh, song. Check it out. Let's say like you, you make the call. <laughs> yeah. Marty. Hey, babe. Does, yeah. Doesn't pick Hit, up. Uh, yeah, that's what how she, she's like, babe, I don't have time. Wait, yeah, what? Sorry, gotta, gotta <laughs> go. So she doesn't pick up. Let's say, because hey, I, I would think Haley would be your next, My next no, one in like, line. Daddy, I'm so glad you called. I need money. Yeah. <laughs> who yeah. would you call past? The fan, like who, who passed Hayden. those two? My daughter, my daughter, would be like, do they still have that tracker on your wallet, you, so I can find it when they, when your body's gone? Did you make sure I was in the will. <laughs> you did write me in the will, right, Daddy? Uh, okay. All right. So I, okay. So I guess my order would be. What about your mom? My wife, my daughter. My mom, and then probably Betty. I'd be like, I'm not going to be here on Monday. <laughs> Rock. I'd be like, All right, I'll put yeah. a best up show. Yeah, hey, I just Betty, need. I need you to know. Yeah, show. I just need you to know this, Rock, that I've always loved you, and uh, you know, uh, and I right, and listen, I just I gotta go. My good, phone's done. I want good things for you, and uh, I like, value hey, it's work hours. Don't call me. I value your friendship, and uh, you interrupted my nap. You've always made me laugh, <laughs> and I really appreciate that. Are you still there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so okay, wait, good. Who are you calling? Like, what's your? Who would so, I call? If, if, I would just call your mom, mom or, or your dad. dad. What if you? you get I would, no, I have better. I would have better luck with someone answering if I call my mom. Okay, my if, dad is not known to carry his. But who do you phone. want to say that news to? Your mom or your dad? Like, because your mom's gonna be really my, sad. Who's taking that? A my mom better. would be sad, but she would at least listen. My dad. Your dad be giving, he'd be giving you advice. T- t- drop, tuck and roll, tuck and roll. <laughs> yeah. When you hear it come into the ground, toot, you just tuck and roll. <laughs> you're going to your make it. You're going to make it. No, I think my dad would be kind of like you, Wally, where it's like you're looking through a a straw. straw. Yeah. You know, like, for instance, if Haley calls you and she's like screaming and crying and saying something, you get tunnel vision yeah. and it's like you don't really take in what's going on. You just know you're panicking. Yeah, I, can, I think that's how my dad would think. I can tell you the... The phone calls where your child calls you and they are audibly upset, and sometimes you're like, "Okay, you, you had a breakup <laughs> or what?" I mean, like a bug got in the car. Well, it's funny because one time we were we were at uh, we were playing cards at Molly and Greg's house, and their daughter uh, Lily called, and she'd been broken up with. And oh, she was dang, devastated. Oh, and we're all there. being kind and stuff. And then she's like, I just, I just, I, I can't get back. <laughs> <laughs> and, How do you not laugh? Yeah, and that How was it. Like, even, even her parents were like, 
Oh. And so, so we're like, it's okay. We're all giving her advice. And, and we're like, well, why don't you just go like jump in the shower? I can't get off the floor right now. You know? Like, and, and so, and, and so, but you feel bad. But on yeah. something like that, you're like, okay, it'll pass. It's fine. So when my funny. daughter called me uh, in her car and could not was like in the middle of like tornadoes breaking Whoa. out around her mm. and she couldn't get home because trees were down mm. and power lines were down and she's freaking out mm. and I'm on a freeway in LA trying to figure out where I'm going and she's asking me what to do and like she's like I don't even know where I am I'm like I can't help you mm. unless you help me help you you mm. know look help around me. tell me what where were you going where were you coming from <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. It was the most frustrating thing. But I felt so bad for her. And, I, and it was horrible. Like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, weren't you, was it your wife on the phone with somebody when you got in your accident? Oh, we, we were on the phone with her mom. Yes. Yeah. I cannot even imagine. Yeah. Your mom, your, did, now, did, does, your, does her mom, it was her mom, right? Mm -hmm. Does she say, oh, I heard you scream and then the phone went dead? She, or no, what'd no. You say? So, so whenever it happened, she was there and she said, What's going on? Like, what's going on? Are you guys okay? Like, mm -hmm. I, again, I can't imagine what it sounded like uh, on her end. But then I just remember Riffic. Haley saying out loud, "She's like, we're not okay," which is funny because we kind of were per right. se. But in the moment, you oh. don't totally know. And then we had to hang up so we could get out of the car. And oh. so on her end to hear, you know, the Kush, and then the so you were not the okay. phone stayed connected. It did. It, it didn't. Or it, yeah, it didn't go off or anything yeah and so and again that was funny my phone also didn't and i i had left it in the car and when we got back to the crash later to get it from the um the pickup truck place my phone was still on it was still tracking our gps so, so i i am fascinated it's that like that recalculating it, it, was, it was i picture it in the pickup truck going yeah. back to recalculating recalculating yeah but yeah that, that well I, it makes you wonder like how do the 911 dispatchers do, do it? it because that day, is their job is to, you have to be so disconnected uh -huh. yeah i think what you have to do is you have to tell yourself that I'm I'm disconnected from this so that I can help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if you become emotional too, you're no good to anybody. Right. So you literally have to just separate yourself and it's all about facts. Well, I watched a show, I forget now what it was called, but it was all about people that work in the 911 dispatch mm -hmm. unit and you would be behind the scenes watching them put in the information, type it on their computers or whatever. And then they're also on the phone with the police or with the fire department. Like so they're saying, yes, multitasking. They're saying okay, ma'am, I'm and let me let that let me get that information to our police officers yeah. and they've got a gps tracking where the police officers right. are where that phone is but you hear someone screaming like a woman being like leave me alone yeah i would be so be like, horrible oh at gosh. that too like leave me alone i'd be like what was the address again <laughs> five <laughs> you got dyslexia two <laughs> dang it Two, one. Say that again. Okay. Now, now, is, is it is it road or court? <laughs> I would be so bad at that job. Oh, yeah. I, okay? I I realize too, like how like squirrel like schizophrenic I am when I go back to my office. Okay, like today on the show we had a couple of things we were replaying because we liked them from the day before and we play them at a different hour so other people hear them that would have missed it. And so when when that happens, I go back in the office and I'll work on things for the next day or something coming up for the show. And so I was in there and the second I'm I'm working, I'm writing something and something hit me. I open my email. Now I'm doing email, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm like, oh, I got to stop this. OK, so I close the email and then I go back to the thing I'm writing. And then I hear somebody say something and I'm like, oh, I need to look that up on, online. And you like, know what I'm, just, I'm just ping pong it. What is that? That is ADHD. Or it's being like super efficient. No, because Do you you're call just, that efficient. Yeah, because you're just multitasking. You literally, it's we have bad. to we have to remind you before <laughs> every break. Do you have the right bed? <laughs> you, and you forget where we are. Right. Sometimes I do. You call that efficient? Sometimes. Yeah. No, that is ADHD, <laughs> sir. If I, if it I, would be weird to see what you're like with some type of medicine. Yeah. That curbs that. That would be like if you were more efficient. Oh, no. Uh, would you be more? So it yeah. makes them great. In tune. Thank you, Gavin. I, I, I see great people. No, a, I, I've mm. seen people that take like ADD medicine and ADHD medicine, and it definitely changes them. Uh, now, I don't know about doses and things. I, I know I know nothing mm. about it. So, But it definitely, because they're like, oh, it calms me down. It helps me focus. 
but they they uh, don't have their appetite, which ooh, that could be great. Um, <laughs> but they uh, but they definitely are different. And I've always feared anything that slows my brain yeah. down. Uh, like, cause right, I mean, my brain is firing. Like, it's always doing it's something. It's firing, all right. right. So, I mean, it's misfiring. Which I think makes sense as to why <laughs> right. there's the occasional forgetting. Absolutely. Thing. Even though I think you're like, oh, I'm getting older. I'm doing it more yeah. often these days. Like, you do think about a ton of things yeah. on the daily. Yeah. And so I think it's almost logical that you are gonna like Miss lose things. sight yeah. of some of those things. And yeah. I don't think it's a a miss rate that's detrimental. I think you're old. Thank you. I would not wear, like, yeah, that's why I don't know that I would take, like, ADD. First of all, I don't think I actually have clinical ADD. I think I'm just scattered a little bit. Uh, (laughs) So, yeah. Because he went to doctor school. I went to doctor school, You don't understand. You wouldn't understand. I don't know what ADD is, but I got 80 of them. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Um, And so. I have 88. What? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Yeah, I'm curious how I would, would react on that. Or like other people too, like that take mes- medicine for depression. Like mm-hmm. that medicine, I don't understand how, the difference in what that does for you. Like, how does it make you feel? Well, speaking as someone who takes anxiety right. or depression medication, right. I'm not really sure. Like, which. what what does it do? But do you feel the how, same? Yeah, okay. but the but the how they explain it to me is is that if you picture like a uh, like a water source or something. And in your brain, you have a certain limit of happy happiness. Mm. And when something bad happens, well, it's going to go down. It drains but it, it. But it rises back up okay. eventually. You know, like it catches up to make this sure go back up. But once, if you're like in a depressive state or an anxious state and it's constant, mm. you're going down, 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 and you're, I forget what they call it, that keeps your happiness going. Serotonin, Serotonin. Maybe? Yeah. It, ke- ser- it can't keep up. Right. And so what this does is it keeps your serotonin more level. Yeah, so it basically so fills even, your tank back up and keeps right. you balanced. Yeah. Yeah, it keeps the level similar. Yeah. That's interesting. So it balances out. Yeah, that'd be yeah. interesting. My, da- my daughter calls them her hot girl pills. <laughs> I've never heard that. You know, like you have hot girl summer. She's yeah. like, she's like, oh, these are my hot girl pills. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> because without them, she's a mess, I guess. <laughs> I wonder uh, where she gets that. I have no idea. Mm. Her mom. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. We covered a lot today. We really like did. Like bear and shark attacks. From like super serious death stuff to uh, yeah. some Calling psychology. Someone. And, yeah, all good. Your last call. Was there any? Was that it though? Because you had you started with shark attack. Yeah, the, de- the guy that, died. That yeah. was it then. He right? died. Yeah. Okay. He died. End of story. <laughs> that's that's not funny. Maybe that's yeah. how we need to end this. Yeah, Rock, what is wrong with you? That's not funny. Again, you're a mess. All right, let's go pack some Bibles and then uh, get out of here for the day. And as always, thanks for being a potty. Growing up in poverty has never been easy for children, but with the added challenges of the pandemic, conflict, and natural disasters, families around the world are facing an unprecedented food crisis. Unfortunately, those who are already hungry are now even more desperate. But by sponsoring a child through compassion, you can help provide life-sustaining essentials such as food and clean water. And with your compassionate support, that child can not only survive, but also flourish. You can find out how and choose a child to sponsor when you click on the compassion banner at wayfm.com.